Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench. And in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to use a depth pass from Redshift, which doesn't really have any focus information inside of After Effects using Frisch Lift or Camera Blur. So we have a locked off focus point that we can use for our shots. So Sev, Andrew, Embry, and I were working on a project and we were rendering some depth passes out of Redshift. And Redshift renders out a true depth pass, which means it doesn't consider focus. So it really just kind of assigns values based on how far away they are from the camera. So as the camera moves, the gray values in your scene will also move, as you can see. So Sev went through and in first lift picked a point on here on the actual logo, which is not this one, and had keyframes for this whole entire thing. When I came back from vacation and jumped back into this project, I needed to add this extra blur in the corners so that we had more of a shallow depth of field, kind of a tilt shift macro look. And once we you know, took a look at that and started to look at this thing more closely, we realized that we were losing focus on the edges of our client's logo. And obviously that's not good, but we had already set this look. So I knew I needed to basically flatten out the color here because with this tight depth of field, there wasn't gonna be a way that that would ever possibly be in focus. So we had to cheat it. And so I did that by drawing a mask over top of this thing. And as you can see, when this finally loads, that fixes our focus issues. So then I just had to figure out how to do it to the other 119 frames. So the first thing that I did was I grabbed Sev's scene, and this isn't the original scene. This has been scaled down, but I have the original scene in here. So let's take a look at that one. So we're gonna drop this into a comp and wait a minute, cause it's pretty hefty. All right, so as this uh, takes forever to actually load, we're gonna see that we have this whole thing set up. I would actually have his actual depth pass in here, but I really just wanna show you guys how to extract this information out of here if you don't know that. You just click on this guy. Cineware should automatically be applied if you drag your cinema comp in here. And then we're gonna drag down here and extract. And normally this is quite quick. So anyway, let's delete this scene out of here. We don't know why we have this octane light. We're gonna get rid of these cameras. And now we're left with nulls. And Sev set these up to be the top portions of the uh, microchip so I could have a nice mask that goes over top of it. So then from there, I needed to actually have something to put on there. And I already had built a layer on top of everything, but let's just bring this shape in here. And we are going to open up this can create nulls from path script that I can never find quickly enough. And that popped off screen and here it is. So I had drawn a mask on a mine, so I'm gonna do that. And we'll just roughly draw in a rectangle here. Click it. I didn't bezier that thing. Oh, come on, come on. Not sure how I did that to every one of those, but there we go. So I'm gonna hit points follow nulls. So you can see it gave me a new null for every one of these points. We can close this guy. Now, the other nice thing that I didn't realize when I first did this, because I generally just make this on my own, but it was just quicker to do this. You can dump all these nulls out and then it has these controls here and you can actually just go down and pick your nulls. So we can do two, three, four, and five. And there we go. Now we have one mask that follows our whole thing. I obviously brought this guy in using mask expansion because I didn't want any of the edges to get messed up and then I feathered it so we can have a nice little transition. So that fixed one issue, and that was really just getting this mask animated. So at least I didn't have to roto it. But of course the problem after that is that if we turn this off, you can see that this chip changes its color throughout the entirety of this move because we can't lock focus in our depth pass. I could have probably taken the value from Frisch Lift that Sev had selected and then just made this that color. You just have to multiply it out by 16 bit to get the value that you need. But one, I didn't think of that at the time. Two, you might not have keyframes to start with. And three, something might change and those keys might not be useful anymore and then you could be screwed. So the basic idea is that we're gonna take the four points from this mask and use them to calculate a center point. So let's hit V so I can get back to my normal cursor and drag this guy over You can see my expression. So I'm gonna hit EE on this guy. This goes into color. As you can see, it's baked. And that's just so that it would be quicker to render and also because I needed to bump some stuff out with a master property later on. And I didn't want it to do anything weird, so I baked it. If you're curious, you have this thing selected, all you do is right click and do keyframe assistant and then you do uh, convert expression to keyframes. So now that I had this mask built on here and this is the same way we just built the other one. So this is After Effects' expression. So I'm gonna bring that in and we're gonna start here at the bottom first because it's a little bit easier to understand. And we're gonna say L equal to the effect layer control layer. And that's gonna be the layer of your actual depth pass. So here it's layer four and we have it selected up here as layer four. Then we're gonna set up variable PT for point and we're gonna use a function that I wrote up here, get point, and you can see it takes a MSK for mask. So we're gonna pass in a mask, which is the mask of this layer itself. 
that's locked to those nulls. And then we're going to add half the comp size, which at the time of this guy was 1280 by 720. I'm actually kind of curious how that still holds there like that, but uh, you know, whatever. Oh, I know. It's been scaled. That's why. Yeah. Because I use scale comps to bring this guy back down. All right. Anyway, so we're going to set L.sample image equal to the point that we're given back from my function. And we're going to sample a radius of 10, 10. And we want it to include effects and everything. So true, because this thing, I think, has some uh, exposure adjustments or whatever that Sev had done. So then let's look at our get point function up here. You see, we're passed in the mask, right? So we're going to set points equal to the mask dot points. And then we're going to just zero out a variable for X and Y. And then for I equals zero, while I is less than the amount of mask points that we have, we're going to do I plus plus. So to the variable X, we're going to add point, the point at I. So whatever point number we're at, and we're going to pass in the zero part of the next array, which is X. Same thing for Y, except for we're going to check the array position one. So this thing basically sums up all of the X values of all the points that we have in our mask and all of the Y values of all the points that we have in our mask. And then when we're done with that loop, we're going to divide those by four. You can also make this X divide equals four, but whatever. Then we're going to return X and Y. So that point will be basically the average of the four points that we have, which in this case would be right in the middle of this rectangle. And that should work for any regular polygon too, just if you need to. So that got us a consistent color that follows the middle of this chip. So then we just had to lock our focus point to this guy. Even if you're not trying to modify an area like we're doing here, you can still use this sort of technique to track a focus point for Frisch Lift. Now that we have a single color for this mask, it's pretty trivial to get the information to Frisch Lift or Camera Blur using a master property. So how do we do that? Well, that's actually pretty easy. We pull in this expression and we look at that. All right, so this one's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is give Frisch Lift an 8-bit value to select where the focus point is. Its controls don't change, so even if it's 16-bit or I guess even 32-bit, it's not going to be different. So we're just going to give it a point and we'll be all set. We're not clamping this point, so technically it has a floating value to it anyway, so it can be pretty accurate. So all we're going to do is take that fill color, and we're taking color 0 because it doesn't really matter which one they are because it's gray values, and we're going to multiply that by 255. And initially I had the wrong value. I had basically the opposite value I needed in first lift. So I realized that I needed to subtract that value that I just got, this gray value, from 255. Note, I think if your mat is inverted, you won't have to subtract it this way. So why is this gray value thing in here, right? Because this is a slider I made, right? So why, why is this guy in here? I mean, I guess I could have taken the slider out of here afterwards, but I basically just set this up as a master property and brought it into my comp. And it's also baked in here because if you have an expression on here, you can get some weirdness with master properties that way. It kind of worked, but it was flaky. At that point, I baked the color and I baked this custom slider. And then it's in here in our modified depth. You can see if I hit EE, it comes up. And it also has its expression turned off because it had an expression. So you can see this master property is controlled by an expression in the master comp. Click here to override. When I baked it, obviously that wasn't the case anymore. So it's not on. So if you're curious at what this looked like in the end, this is what it looks like. So since we had the Element Supply Company logo here, let's talk about Element Supply since this video is sponsored by Element because I'm a part of Element. We're using some elements from Corona to add this light here on the sides to just give our scenes some depth. We use it pretty extensively throughout this project and it helped us out. So make sure to check out elementsupply.co. There's a lot of cool products up there and some free stuff as well. So uh, go get you some. Thanks, Richard Rawlings. Anyway, let's look real quick at how we stylize this guy uh, let's click on this guy. This is pretty cool right here. It's no longer a problem, so let's just dump that. All right, so here are Corona elements, and if we kill those, you can see we lose some life here. Kind of sad. Got our base scene, our depth, obviously. We have our first lift on our base raw scene here. Then above that, we have some glow. We're using Universe's Chromatic Aberration, and we are also using Boris FX S Glow because it's very nice. Then above that, we have a LUT that I created in Resolve for this project. And then above that, we have further tweaks just for this composition. We have some curves on there, and that's pretty much it for this layer. Then above that, we have some 4K Fuji 35 millimeter grain, and I set it to overlay, and then it was a little dark, so I brought the exposure up to 1.2. And when you combine all that, you get that glow back, and there you go. So I know this is a pretty niche topic, but it allowed us to keep our art direction, and it saved us a lot of time in keyframing, and it turned out to be pretty clutch for our team. So hopefully you guys can keep this one in your back pocket so that if you need this kind of thing in a deadline, you don't have to worry about it like we did. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out workbench.tv support. 
Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you next time. Bye.